Chapter 6. Recharting the Debates on Labor Theory of Value in Light of Smart Machines, Effect, and Climate Change. In this chapter, divided into three distinct sections, we investigate how the communist approach contributes to the ongoing debate surrounding the relevance of the Marxian labor theory of value (LTV) in the context of rising smart machines, the increasing importance of affect, and the growing ecological challenges faced by human civilization. Since the mid-20th century, the LTV has been questioned by critical theorists on two fronts. One has focused on the changing nature of capital post-Marx, while the other has questioned the theory's incapacity to recognize sources of value other than wage labor, such as social and ecological reproduction. See end note 1. While there are overlaps between the two, the remedies either point to abandoning or limiting the use of the theory due to its fallacies or narrowness or to reinterpret it to make it applicable to all true sources of value and new features of capital. What we call the rejectionists neither recognize any utility in the concept of value nor see wage labor as the ultimate source of value. The revisionists, meanwhile, draw on various reinterpretations of the theory, above all, various versions of the so called new interpretation, to argue that the theory is still quantitatively applicable if correctly interpreted and or that the disparate seeds of its qualitative reconstruction are detectable across Marx's works. It is beyond the scope of this book to engage deeply in those debates or present a detailed review of them. We will, however, briefly discuss the major lines of dispute and the implications of the communist perception of value for overcoming them, arguing that the communist modular framework can help us avoid some of the underlying confusion. The labor theory of value in the age of smart machines, reinterpretation, abandonment, or reconstruction. Marx begins capital with the commodity as a modern form of objectified human labor in capitalism. It can be analyzed in terms of its dual nature, being the source of use value and value at the same time, the latter being necessarily represented as exchange value. This duality of value is rooted in the bifurcation of labor into concrete labor and abstract labor. Abstract labor, expressed as the socially necessary labor time to produce commodities, is the common denominator embedded in exchanged commodities, making them commensurable despite their qualitative differences. Workers sell their labor power, capacity to work, as a commodity, and therefore, their labor power is valued in terms of the labor time necessary for its reproduction. However, unlike other commodities, labor power can produce value. Any quantity of value created beyond the average labor time socially necessary for the reproduction of labor is surplus value. Surplus value is the origin of aggregate profit appropriated and accumulated by the capitalist class. Capital constantly strives to maximize profit by extending the working hours or by intensifying the laboring process through automation, mechanization, which results in shortening the labor time necessary for the reproduction of labor. Thus, under capitalism, ownership, and control over the means of production, rather than political dominance, becomes the primary source of power. The formation of a social class, of people who must sell their labor power in exchange for wages becomes possible. The working class, is existentially dependent on the means of production while at the same time being excluded from controlling it. The power of capital lies in its ability to control the working class by alienating them from their capacity to work and from the products of their work. However, the exploitation of workers is not the only aspect of what Marx's value theory tries to grasp. As Harvey, 2018a, argues, the theory, focuses on the consequences of value operating as a regulatory norm in the market for the experience of laborers condemned by their situation to work for capital. The standard interpretation of Marx's LTV views the substance of value as the labor time contained in commodities. Accordingly, no capitalist value is produced if no labor time is directly contained in privately owned commodities with social use value, made through privately owned and controlled social production for the mere purpose of private exchange. The demise of the role of living labor in the generation of capital in late capitalist modes of production poses a serious challenge to the LTV, making it inadequate or redundant, 
according to some critics, if not totally refuting it, according to other critics. The conditions that pose such a challenge are those in which Labor loses ground to the machine in an increasingly automated and smart mode of capitalist production. The division of labor is decentralized. Work is socialized, and the boundaries between production and reproduction are obscured. Work is precaritized. The prominence of material products is overtaken by the immaterial ones showing a strong tendency to reduce the share of wage labor to almost zero since they can be reproduced indefinitely by a negligible amount of labor. And finally, rent and interest, bypassing commodity production, have become the dominant bases of revenue and capital growth. Post-Marxists, post-structuralist and critical theorists, as well as autonomist Marxists have been among the more radical critics of LTV arguing for its abandonment. The crux of their criticisms is their emphasis on the role of advanced technologies in transforming the capitalist mode of production beyond dependence on productive labor. Capital is now significantly more capable of extracting value out of the so-called unproductive socio-ecological sphere. See end note 2. Machines and algorithms manage the value chain and concrete human labor is less and less necessary. Allegedly cited from Wimmer, 2020, page 287. Some argue that this new format of capitalism makes prior labor theories of value obsolete. Negri and Hart, 2004, page 150, argue that, I, n the paradigm of immaterial production, the theory of value cannot be considered in terms of measured quantities of time, so exploitation cannot be understood in these terms. Marx's LTV becomes superseded, according to Negri, 1988, since both production and reproduction have been subsumed into capital. As productive labor gives way to socialized work, the whole process of social reproduction, social life, becomes subject to commodification. As this intensifies, the labor of social reproduction turns increasingly into a type of abstract labor that can no longer be assessed under the capitalist factory regime of time. As the measurement of value becomes random in the absence of any objective criterion, such as labor time, control over the worker's labor power returns to its political form. See Negri and Emery, 2018, page 18. In the case of social media, for example, those who follow this argumentation, like Arvidsson and Colioni, 2012, do not see the effective work and financial speculations of the users as dependent on their labor time. According to them, such work only adds value to the brand of companies, and thus Marx's LTV is deemed irrelevant. See end note 3. Against such a radical departure from LTV, and to overcome its limitations in dealing with sources of value other than direct, living wage labor, revisionists have proposed, 1, expanding the notion of labor to be inclusive of any alienated, coerced and boundless work. That amounts to an expenditure of abstract labor and thus creates value for capital. See De Angelis, 1995. K. 2007. CN Note 4. Or, 2. Analytically differentiating between what adds value, that is living, direct labor, and what has value, that is, indirect, past labor, embedded in non labor inputs. The new interpretation argues that non labor inputs like the rest of nature, technology, applied science, and effective work only transfer their value, as embedded in direct, past labor, to the end product through labor. But, there cannot be value added if there is no direct, living, labor, quote from Rada and Purana, 2022, page 1047. See Endnotes 5 and 6. Moreover, Marx was concerned with the long-term scope and macro scale of capital. Marx's capital shows that surplus value can be produced in one industry yet realized as profit, and possibly revenue, by other industries over the course of circulation, See Cogliano, 2018, page 505. Therefore, the fact that some sectors of the economy undergo substantial automation or digitalization does not mean that labor is wiped out of the whole picture, nor that its role is meaningfully minimized. In the case of corporate social media, those inspired by the new interpretation school argue that no value is added through the involvement of the prosumers with the corporate social media platforms. 
Riggi and Prey, 2015. Value, they argue, is transferred only from one commodity form to another. However, the revenue made in such virtual spaces and the value added of brands can still be understood in terms of the roles of monopoly rentier capitalism, extra profit, and fictitious capital. This view rejects the idea that the users, prosumers of social media produce value and surplus value by spending their labor time, creating data, and or turning themselves into audience commodities, whose surplus time spent on watching ads generates surplus value, as advocated by Fuchs, 2010, Fuchs and Mosco, 2016. They warn against conflating the general surplus value produced at the point of production with its particular manifestation in the realm of distribution. See Endnote 7. According to those who draw on the new interpretation, Marx differentiated between value and price, and therefore, the growth in the income or profit of companies that produce immaterial commodities, such as digital information, DI, almost fully automated with almost zero labor time involved cannot be interpreted as an increase in the extraction of surplus value and rate of exploitation. The fully automated infinite replication of immaterial commodities cannot be fully explained by the Marxian value theory. See Endnote 8. The production of immaterial commodities only transfers value from pools of surplus value that are already created in other sectors. For instance, cryptocurrencies should be seen as digital assets, rather than money, that have value but no value added since their production and speculation, draw from the existing global pool of value added, see Rata and Piranha, 2022, page 1046. This is because the process does not directly derive from production relations and requires no direct living labor. However, as assets, they do contain capitalist value. The origin of this value lies in the electricity, the labor of nature, expended in their mining, the surplus value of surplus labor solidified in the energy production process in the required computational equipment and warehousing, as well as the social reproductive labor that underpins all the above sources. With the increase in the costs of mining cryptocurrencies, they have shifted to places where electricity is heavily subsidized by the state, i.e., the Global South resulting in the extraction of massive quantities of value out of nature and public resources for funding social-ecological reproduction. Therefore, the decommunization of the sources of conviviality and livability and their perversion into the sources of fetish value has accelerated. Those who argue for abandoning LTV base their arguments on perceiving the new advancements in capitalism as transmutations in the nature of capital. However, the history of capitalism reveals that automation, driven by competition and capital's inherent urge for maximizing profit, has been a constant feature of capitalism. As Bananev, 2020, page 7, reminds us, the same is not true of the theory of a coming age of automation, which extrapolates from instances of technological change to a broader account of social transformation. Failing to adequately grasp the nature of capital results in a linear episodic perception of the history of capital. But what are the implications of the communist framework for comprehending the complexities of capital that pose challenges to LTV? Many Marxist theorists concentrate on the quantitative aspect of Marx's theorization of mechanization, which is the translation of the alteration in the value and technical composition of capital into a general fall of the rate of profit and the contradictory consequences for both capital and labor. The qualitative aspects of the phenomenon that can be extracted from Marx's method are less well received. Marx did not see automation as simply causing unemployment. Rather, he noted its potential impact in the form of the displacement of labor from more capital intensive to more labor intensive industries that we identify today as the service sector, which is arguably more involved in value circulation than value production. However, even the mass relocation of laborers may be caused by political economic factors other than automation. See the study by Bananev, 2020.cn note 9. Machines, as dead labor, are made and maintained by living labor. They are thus ossified surplus values extracted from the labor involved in the creation of their use value. 
However, at the micro level of automatized firms, sectors, the more dead labor is employed, the more the share of surplus value, extracted out of the living labor, in increased productivity and profit declines. If labor is perceived as the only source of value in the automated sector, the LTV will fail to explain the growth of capital in the context of the decline in the share of labor unless we expand the scope to the aggregate macro level. However, as explained later in this chapter, we may argue that greater fetish value is produced in money form, as capital becomes more independent from living labor by converting it into an externality to be absorbed, compensated by not only the more labor-intensive sectors of the economy but also by the community, civil society institutions, political organizations through civilizing mechanisms, and the rest of nature. More fundamentally, we may contend that automation or mechanization, for Marx, was a mechanism for extending control over the labor process through the objectification of the division of labor. The automatized factory, according to Marx, was a prime mover capable of exerting any amount of force while retaining perfect control. Quote from Marx, 1990, page 506, cited in Smith, 2022, page 137. Automation is a radical reformatting that usually de-skills the laborer, reducing them to operators and depriving them of their specialized subjective labor power, knowledge, and associated potentialities for resistance. But even when de-skilling is not significant, the more that work is automated, the less autonomy workers exercise. This means that the primary abstraction of human creative power is further infiltrated into the commodity production relations through which labor loses its organized prefigurative power and convivial base to determine the final cause of production, that formerly was manifested in their unionism, tempering capital's final cause, endless growth, with their own welfare. The subjectivity of human creative power and its skillful mastery over the means of production, to the extent they are free from any means of control, is rooted in the commonality of living in convivial relations. The idea of machines evolving from tools to workers, creating a post-work, future, is a hyperbole, see Wagikman, 2022. But machines gaining greater functionality as means of subjugation, mostly through the precarization of occupations and decentralization of production lines resulting in less workplace conviviality, has always been the case in capitalist modes of production. This constitutes another pathway for the infiltration of primary abstraction into production relations. The deeper reification of labor made possible by post-human technology, techno-colonialist capital, reduces the share of the secondarily abstracted labor in the extraction of capitalist value from the mechanized production process. However, this also increases the primary abstraction of excluded labor through new modes of re engaging peripheralized labor. This reification of human creative power is complemented by fetishization, in which dead labor, machines, appears as a source of value worthy of investment, while living labor is perceived as a cost. Therefore, the efficient causality of labor and the formal causality of workplace solidarity, as the remaining elements of the commoning nature of collective work, are further reduced to material causality, making workers more easily interchangeable with one another and with machines. The issue of alienation becomes even more prominent here. Automation, when manifested under the command of high-tech, is a dehumanizing process that significantly compromises, more than, human capacities for creative, moral, and aesthetic reasoning over a long healthy life and achieving such a life, in balance with the embedded self, the other, community, and the rest of nature, refer to Al Amudi, 2022, Demichelis and Caution, 2022. Increased automation at the micro level of productive industrial firms results in the reduction of the value of productive industrial labor power as variable capital. As this becomes a new norm across the entire advanced capitalist economy, the way will be paved for greater exploitation of labor and the extraction of surplus value under more precarious conditions in more labor intensive sectors. This issue paradoxically discourages investment in technological innovation in sectors with cheapened labor in nature. 
As some types of machines or automation systems become popular, a new generation of ancillary industries grows to produce, train, and educate them, supply energy and parts, and provide services that are not productive, e.g., circulation and supervision. They would add to the demand for labor. However, these industries often rely on outsourcing their needs to and from developing societies, or, the Global South, which offer cheaper labor, often due to lax regulations, and abundant natural resources, often with weak environmental laws. Wherever outsourcing is not possible, these services are left to be provided by the public, small business, and not-for-profit sectors with thin profit margins, per the inflamed costs of operation and dictated by monopoly rentier and finance capital. These activities, contrary to what Marx assumed, are not major costs to capital but rather to society, i.e., socialized costs that contribute to the private accumulation of capital. <laughs> 